Hey everyone, welcome to yoga satsang video. It's really beautiful to be here with you. I hope you are uh, doing well in your life and um, and your um, shining of the light out into the world through the sort of the mandala that you're making. It was really beautiful to sit together uh, about a week ago in our live satsang and such a clear feeling coming through that um, as we have been moving on with our sort of practice and teachings and so on, <clears throat> that you are the mandala, you know, uh, people moving into different roles in their lives, wanting to be helpful in the world, um, meeting the, the obstacles of the day with that bit more clarity and truth. And you can actually see it in your faces. That's what uh, is really interesting. It's just really interesting from my point of view, seeing you uh, and seeing the light begin to inhabit your physical forms. Uh, and then, as we've talked about a lot recently, moving out more in genuinely meaningful action. And, um, and yet the forms are very different, you know, for each of you, you know, what you're doing and so on. Uh, it may be that uh, we're allowing the, the light to come into our relationship it may be the way that we work in the hospital. It may be the way we sit with somebody who's dying. It may be the way that someone stands on stage uh, and communicates with um, you know, those in the audience uh, or through the video or whatever. <clears throat> beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So my deepest gratitude to you for your life and for your practice and for just being who you are, because that's it. The actual secret is there. It's about actually being who you are um, and allowing the light to illuminate that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I want to um, talk about the current situation in the world, well, in Britain, actually. Uh, which I'm sure you're all aware of, um, because this, the path cannot divorce itself from what is actually happening uh, to real people, uh, with real people, in the moment. <clears throat> and while we work on understanding the ground of being as we've been discussing, being like the primary initial spiritual concern uh, when we begin to tread the path. And we can either take a, a structured approach to that or a directly pointed approach. I am more of a direct pointer as a teacher. Um, but I do understand that people need structures too. So I do my best <laughs> uh, to create structures. But, uh, you know, I find that the hardest work of all. Um, actually uh, to, to work in that way because my own uh, change uh, was direct uh, and so um, I have to kind of rethink everything <laughs> uh, and try and to kind of put it into some sort of conceptual framework um, which of course what we're talking about is beyond concept. Let me grab my cup of tea and um, And so I'm sure you've seen <clears throat> England, Britain, right now in this first week of August 2024, uh, through some news media or through social media or something. And uh, people are calling it this and calling what's going on that. <clears throat> Very interesting, very, very interesting. Terrifying as well, uh, from a, just a basic human point of view. 
And, um, and so I wanted to look with you at the conditions uh, that are part of this because you will recognize it in use within your own society too, I am sure. And then I want to reflect on what we might do and how we rehabilitate um, a little bit from this um, with a very long view, which is what we've got to have. Uh, you know, so we're working with the now, the eternal moment, um, the fourth state, as it's called in, uh, in certain principles, uh, Turiya, uh, it's called when you have that experience of the emptiness that is full, that is you, but is not you, that has always been. Ha. Um, and yet life and expression and the mandala takes place in time uh, and organically. So, uh, as we were saying in the satsang, it's complete as one and it's complete as two when we stand on the ground uh, of truth, of being, of, of the light that is throughout. But then it's the action into the world that really, really matters. So we don't try and change our lives, but what we do do is we allow our lives to be changed from the urgings of spirit, as we might say, rather than the following through the conditions of mind. So just looking at um, what we might call the situation, I just want to invite you to take a moment to feel that for yourself. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I invite you to go access TikTok, uh, and type in uh, British riots, something like that. TikTok is probably the best place to look uh, because it's more unfiltered. Um, standard news media is going to give you what that system uh, and its allegiances and alliances uh, want you to think of. Uh, from that point of view. So I invite you to pause this if you don't know what I'm talking about and go and have a look. Uh, or if you do know, then sit with it for a moment. And sit with it in the heart of wisdom, in the light of self. Now, what can be difficult is because we're moving in the nameless realm, it can be hard to name things. It can be hard to explain things. But the heart of the light, the wisdom in us sees, and it is the wisdom that we need individually. So what we see structurally, and we always have to look at the structures, is we see that, uh, that the UK has, ha, United Kingdom, uh, I'm going to have to change the name. <laughs> uh, the UK has recently become a vassal state. And <clears throat> much in the same way, in, in, in political terms, much in the same way that the US is a vassal state. Um, and so there's always a function being played out through that. And what we've seen for the longest time is influence into education, which has kind of deprived people of 
knowledge of the light that is. So, uh, but not just within education, but within the culture as well, um, generally. So the removal of the arts from culture, the removal of culture from the culture, the removal of, um, you know, the humanities and so on, as well as uh, the non-teaching of history uh, in, a, in a meaningful, um, understanding way and so on. And you can build something over a long period of time. And this is how um, regimes work, uh, you know, in a kind of a long, it's a long playbook. 80 years, we talked about this, that the span of a human life, fish, um, is a great way to radicalize a population or create what you want within it uh, through the kind of the, the filtering in of ideas because there's a uh, there's the reaction to what came before uh, which lasts about 20 years then there's the the middle years of kind of comfort and complacency uh, and then there's the the tip back over into uh, the stuff from before because it didn't get healed during that time because uh, we expect things to be automatic we expect love and healing uh, and democracy and so on to be automatic. So what we've actually seen in using our language here is we've seen the creation of um, a weaponizable pain body populace. So you get people operating at, most people operate at 30, 20, 30 percent. Uh, of pain body. Your average person, they have about 20-30% of pain body in them. They avoid certain things in their lives. They build their structures in a certain way to keep themselves safe from it. They have little bubbles that they move through, um, not realizing that they create their lives in that way. Um, <clears throat> of course, because uh, it, it's all acting out of the unconscious. But that, generally that's kind of what's going on and that's kind of okay. Um, uh, and then once in a while something happens, you go visit your parents at Christmas, uh, you go to on holiday with uh, your partner or something like that and boom, you know, the bomb goes off kind of thing. Or both your bombs go off or everybody's goes off and then you feel like a five-year-old child again, you know, uh, humiliated and belittled at your own explosions and so on. Um, so that is, you know, pretty, pretty standard fare. Uh, as we walk this path, the open space path, uh, of course, that recedes more and more uh, until it, it pretty much doesn't exist. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've not had a sort of a pain body experience in that way for a decade since the change um, where something has just taken over in that way, um, <clears throat> which is... Um, uh, very reassuring. That's why the reason I'm telling you I'm not boasting. <laughs> it's just that, uh, you know, the practice actually works. Uh, this way of life actually works. But when you create, when you, when you want to create uh, a weapon, uh, the best way to do that is through sort of deprivation, radicalization, um, separation, and removal of space, removal of anything connective, uh, and so on, uh, and replacing it with a kind of constant messaging uh, about something. And so what we actually have, people call them rioters and things here, but what, what we actually have is a weaponizable massed pain body that operates round about 80%. Uh, with some people trying to go for the hundred uh, and it's easily triggerable by very, very small things. Uh, and that's very, very easy to create. Uh, it's very interesting. One of the, um, this is purely psychologically uh, we're talking, um, is, is that uh, if you create the conditions in the right way so that uh, parents and children um, are don't form proper attachment bonds, uh, which often happens uh, not just in, in like what we might call the lower class 
you know, it happens very much in the middle classes too, uh, through um, sort of distancing and, and egoic ideas of self and so on. Uh, and the higher up you go, the weirder it gets actually. The, the, the more upper class, the weirder it gets. So the, there's lots of dissociative stuff goes on. Uh, and, um, and whichever of the classes, <laughs> if you work with that structure, uh, forgive me for working with these structures today, if, um, if that proper attachment uh, model doesn't take place, it's not even a model, a proper attachment is a necessary human condition and human thing then the child um, does not develop uh, a self. And so the self then becomes externalized objects. Um, so uh, nationality, uh, nation state, political class, um, us against them. And so when something like this happens, when this is ignited, uh, and it's very easy to ignite, then that rage, that intensity of pain body rushing through every fiber seems to define a sense of self. Not only a sense of self, but then a sense of community too, because there are others just like you, and you have an enemy you have an enemy, these brown people, you know, these black people, these people who, you know, come over here or whatever. And, um, and of course you don't know your own history. You don't know the effect of your history on the lives of others uh, and the continuous pressure on those people throughout their lives and the denial of opportunity and so on. Um, and, uh, uh, and they form pain bodies of their own because of this, of course, uh, and the, the uh, relative attachment disorders. And you have a very manipulable situation on your hands. So um, that is kind of what's going on. That's from, you know, uh, uh, the perspective of consciousness. A friend of mine visited the other night um, and was making the argument that, that these people are unintelligent, which may be true, but uh, it's not true uh, because the instigators of these things, the, 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 the ones who push and pull and uh, control these things, you come, we've all come across highly intelligent people who use their intelligence for no good whatsoever, for evil, in fact. We might call, use the word evil today. And, um, and so, you know, uh, you've, all you've got to do is look at the sort of social media sphere, certain peoples use their intelligence, uh, so-called intelligences, for evil uh, and division. And they end up as professors of this, that, and the other. Uh, a lot of these people too, you know. So you can have really uh, unpleasant, intelligent people uh, doing terrible, terrible things or engendering terrible, terrible things. Um, so it's got nothing to do with intelligence. So what's it got to do with? And um, so I was saying to, to Rob, my friend, uh, that it's actually a matter of consciousness. So if you have absolutely no space whatsoever within you, the pain body wants to explode out all of the time, you know, uh, any chance it gets, because at least there's a sense of freedom in that. So the, the, the process of rehabilitation, we might say, and this is for ourselves and for others, um, if we find ourselves in, in kind of closed, states and not in the open space is about working with consciousness and it's 
really quite simple to work with consciousness, but it's really quite easy to um, suppress it as well. You know, so if you look at um, the bottom layer of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll do for this, um, uh, uh, for this moment, as it were, um, because it, it isn't like that. <laughs> you just, you just got to feel into it. You, it's a very obvious it's not like that. But structurally, it's kind of, it's a useful model for certain things. And so if you, um, you know, remove security uh, around food, security around shelter, you remove security, work security, um, you uh, have no sense of belonging, um, no sense of connection, no sense of proper sexuality and so on. If those things are limited, 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 you know, imagine the simulacrum uh, available to us now uh, through our phones, for example, uh, that um, uh, not just in terms of, of kind of messaging, which creates pain body, <clears throat> but, you know, pornography uh, instead of uh, intimacy and connection, for example, and sexuality. Um, closed worlds, uh, simulating Uh, human connection, uh, Instagram and so on. Um, and, uh, uh, but no movement towards any actual human friendship and connection uh, based in the values that we talk about, uh, friendliness and love and kindness and, uh, and spirit and so on that, that naturally make uh, friendship, relationship and so on. So we have to work with consciousness. And the way we work with consciousness is by creating spaces where people in some way, in any way, structurally, genuinely can experience any fragment of the light that is throughout. And it's really interesting what came to me as a, a, a root that helps people, um, which you might be surprised by, but it's reading. Um, but, you know, of course, getting people to read is another uh, matter uh, kind of thing. And not reading as like the identity of having, of being an intellectual. I know plenty of people like that. And um, in, in the world I move through, um, but I mean just reading. I remember being 13, 14 years old. Um, I should have brought it with me to show you. And, um, and uh, I might have been 16 uh, at some point. <laughs> uh, and I'm round at my beloved friend Sam's house. You've heard about Sam, my, my beautiful friend Sam. Um, and I used to sleep over there a lot. And I remember picking up just because it was there, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And it introduced me to what I did not know I needed. Um, and what I was wanted to show you was, I've forgotten, is for my 60th birthday, um, I happened to be walking along, went into this antique bookstore uh, and was a, not first edition of Jonathan Livingston, but, um, the first British edition of a hardback uh, of uh, John Hillary Mr. Siegel with really high quality paper in it. It's actually the fifth printing or the fifth edition of the book, but it is the first time it appeared in, in Britain um, as a hardback. And um, really highly produced, you know, highest quality uh, sort of thing. And I'm rereading it right now and it's such a thing of beauty. But regardless of Jonathan Livingston Siegel, um, the, <clears throat> the act of reading introduces another voice into you. There's space to actually experience yourself. You begin to uh, have empathy for characters uh, and so on. Reading to me is one of the most beautiful ways 
of transforming people's lives, which is why I'm involved in uh, the creation and running of reading groups all around the country. Um, I'm just mentoring four new people at the moment. There's a, a, the, the, we, we've trained up 16 uh, people to run reading groups for the next year. I have four of them. And, um, and having actually been out in the street and done this for myself as well, actually run um, reading groups for the Royal Literary Fund, and seeing people's lives genuinely change through this is absolutely incredible. So uh, that's only a kind of a tiny example. There are other things like I, uh, I have this idea of gardens and peace gardens and, and things as well. Sort of any kind of open space externally can, can, not necessarily will, introduce some space to the inside of the person. So if you can't experience space internally, it needs to be experienced externally, and then slowly, slowly, things will kind of sort of find their way back. But in terms of what we can do, uh, what you can do, as it were, then I encourage you to, as you have been already doing, is to work within your mandala. Uh, you know, you have a particular mandala unfolding for you from the work that you do, the person that you are, the relationships that you have, that moves out into the world. But to kind of keep this in mind as you work, or keep this in heart uh, and spirit as you work the mandala, basically. So one example of this would be, and that I'm experiencing quite directly, uh, but not unsurprisingly, is... Um, not one person uh, has checked that I'm okay or that Abba's okay during this time. Uh, even though uh, in my writings, I have earlier writings, you know, up to full blood, talked about, um, you know, uh, experiences of, of uh, uh, literally being kind of beaten to the ground and so on by Nazi skinheads and so on when I was younger and um, lack of opportunity and all this sort of stuff, you know, because of the systems in place. And, uh, and that this is re-triggering and so on, uh, you know, in this body very strongly. Uh, Abba's experiencing it for the first time ever, uh, what it's like to be here. But India has its own, um, when we're in India, India has its own sort of mob mentalities as well. Um, which is contr uh, controlled by the, the, um, the government there through WhatsApp groups and so on. So, um, <clears throat> so it's this, but it's the same weaponization uh, of a pain body uh, that will trigger around certain trigger words, you know. Uh, like most of you in America, you know, so listen to people constantly using the trigger words within their broadcast to uh, keep people radicalized. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you'll get words like woke uh, as a trigger, um, uh, leftist, um, far left, um, this, that, the other, you know, um, <clears throat> what do you call it, Crit CRT, critical race theory, uh, you know, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, da 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 da. So there'll be these anti messages all of the time. Uh, and that's from one side to the other, but then from the other side, then there's other messaging, you know, uh, and it would be very easy to mistake the other side of this thing uh, as being in any way better. Uh, we can mistake it as being so because we may benefit from it in some small way. It's always small ways. The economy might be slightly better under this lot, but we're committing a genocide uh, at the same time, you know. So... <clears throat> We're not ready to move beyond these systems yet, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean to say that we don't see them for what they are, you know, and so we have to do the best we can within them. But our, um, our intention for structural change, stemming from the, the truth of the light that is, is um, will bring, uh, bring better changes, but we, have been taught to not create structural change. Uh, we've been taught to uh, make noise 
uh, protest, um, say oh dear about things, um, which I've made a joke out of on social media uh, these days. Every, every time something happens, I just write oh dear, um, uh, which some people get the joke, <laughs> and others just don't know what I'm doing. But there you go. Uh, it's just me being Irish or partially Irish. Um, and enjoying that, that kind of part of my mandala, you know, that part of the expression. <clears throat> you may, if you've got that humor, you may as well do something with it. Um, so yeah, so, uh, so one of the things we can do is look for areas of structural change within our own mandala. But prior to that, we can um, check if people are okay. We can offer our love. Uh, and it's not about knowing the right thing to say. You get this a lot when, um, you know, somebody dies. <clears throat> no one comes to visit you. <laughs> uh, uh, because, oh, I didn't know what to say. You know, they say, when they finally talk to you. I I'd have come round, but I didn't know what to say. You know, and of course, it's about turning up, not about what you say. It's about turning up and saying, I don't know what to say, but I'm here. I don't know what to say, but I'm standing with you. It's exactly the same as internal family systems. We say these to our own parts as we're going through our healing, inner child work and so on. You know, I don't know what to do, but I'm here. Self is here. I am here with you. I'm going to stand beside you and I'm not going to let you go. I will be here. Oh, I know, I'll make you some food. Something like that, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, from the light that is, we actually do need to start doing some actual things. Uh, and I find that this uh, time, as dangerous as it is, is a great teacher. Everything is a great teacher. Every moment has a lesson in it. And this is such a lesson. Because uh, the media and the press will have you looking just at the edge of the wave uh, and saying, this is terrible. How the hell did this happen? What a shock <laughs> it is. Uh, but actually, you're capable of looking at the ocean. You know the ocean because the ocean is, is you. And so um, you can see the... Uh, the dependent arisings that lead to these things. You know, you have that wisdom in you uh, through the way that we work. Uh, it's already in you, it's just that we have ways of working with that. Um, and we're not just stumbling about. So, so we look and you know, you can follow the money that will always tell you really what's going on a lot of the time, uh, if you want to know what's going on. Uh, and you can follow the um, larger structure very easily by looking at the object consciousnesses involved. Um, and you see that it's all based on a delusion of stemming from not knowing the truth of the light that is throughout, through not knowing the ground of being. And so, the world is attempted to be made by that lack of consciousness into uh, visions of itself over and over again. Whereas when we work with the truth of the light that is, then we start to make the world in the way that it was intended to be and our lives as well. For many of us in Western cultures, uh, and there's no non-Western culture these days, everything's touched by it. We've been taught hyper-individualism partly as uh, a function of uh, this thing that we're talking about. So that um, uh, we're unable to actually sort of empathize and so on in this kind of way. Uh, and to put our own needs always first, uh, or what our perceived needs stemming from uh, our unconscious are uh, and, the, and the object consciousness. So we have to kind of, you know, self 
liberate uh, from this as well. And that's, that's the miracle of, of, uh, of what we're working with in that self-liberation is actually what the deal's about. It's not really about being a good meditator, although that's very, very nice um, and beautiful and nourishing. Um, but the, we start to become liberated from the, uh, from the thoughts. We start to become liberated from uh, the entrenched feelings and the vasanas. Uh, and so wisdom can then actually move uh, and new thought can come um, that we don't need to bind to and so on. Or old thoughts become processed uh, by the literal... Um, direct contact with uh, the truth of the ground of being, the light that is. So, you know, there are, I could come up with structural ideas all day, but it's where it's coming from uh, that, um, uh, that really, really helps. But I would say, you know, simple structural things within your mandala uh, as best you can. Uh, as a way of kind of contributing to the world and you're already doing that each one of you that was so clear the other night uh, but more importantly than that right now is to step out of the hyper individuality uh, if that's still affecting you um, and um, and the bubble of comfort that uh, that sometimes sits around that and to see if people are okay um, offer your love and support uh, in the most meaningful way, which is not necessarily words, but actual presence and so on. Um, England is, you know, not in a good way and it's not a surprise. It's been, all, it's been like this the whole time, uh, it, just that it was kind of quiet <laughs> about it. Uh, and then people think that it's gone. Uh, and this is how we lose the world. This is how democracy is taken away. This is how you lose reproductive rights. This is how you, um, you know, lose anything uh, by assuming that it will be there always. And uh, by spiritual bypassing, um, which is what, you know, uh, another tool um, of this, um, this way of doing things, the hyper-individualized, you know, vassal way of doing things. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's work to be done, as it were, and, um, uh, and yet here we are at the same time. So, uh, it's really dangerous here. Uh, Fortunately, there are people uh, infiltrating into these spaces uh, and able to share where things are going to be happening uh, because there's all sorts of telegram channels and all sorts kind of uh, being used to, um, you know, organize these um, pain body explosions against, you know, against other people uh, for... Uh, daring to, um, you know, not die in wars and so on, uh, of the colonial entities' makings. So, um, so, you know, it's a huge thing that we're working with, as it were. And we can, we're not going to change that structure um, immediately, uh, basically. But the depth of our practice the honesty and integrity of our practice and the understanding of beginning to work with our mandala um, means that we are in right activity, uh, basically. Um, and I don't know if I said it or not, but what the great opportunity is of this time is that we're really seeing things for what they are. Each of these things, if we look beyond the edge of that wave, is 
really showing us the conditional aspects of things. And it's heartening to see that some people are actually starting to see, uh, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, again, we're trained in reactivity rather than response uh, and so on a lot of the time. So we have to work with proper response, with true wisdom, uh, with the heart of love that changes things uh, in the right way, that isn't just another plastering on top of things, uh, that it is movements of realization um, and actuality. If we want to um, have a human species and an earth uh, and so on, uh, of course, we may not <laughs> uh, end up with that. So, um, so we, we, you know, we choose the path of liberation anyway. Uh, but to be liberated does not mean to be ignorant um, of suffering in any way. Uh, and, uh, and everyone, every one of those people, the people on the receiving end are suffering and the people causing the suffering are suffering. Uh, and so it's a huge deal. Um, and I sat in a coffee shop this morning, just before coming here, I made a couple of notes for this. And um, I watched somebody who uh, is a more concerned person, shall we say, speaking their concerns um, to somebody who is extremely comfortably off, um, has learned the kind of uh, the English middle class way of saying, oh dear, and, um, and, mm, and uh, but not allowing their heart to be touched in any way by anything outside of themselves, thinking that they are escaping uh, and protecting themselves and yet literally being entirely cut off from life and suffering the karma in that moment uh, of that uh, removal of self um, and uh, the lack of access to sort of the truth of what is. So it's showing us all the time in everything, you know, the Dharma is in everything, the truth of life is in everything and the path is showing itself to us at all times which is beautiful to know let's leave it there um, we're still in this office for one more week so this is the final satsang from here i would have gone out into nature today, but uh, I have some sort of business appointments uh, later this afternoon. So I just thought I'll come and use this space one last time. Uh, I've kind of gone already from here. Um, let me know how you are. You know, pop me an email. Let me know how you are. Let me know your thoughts on um, what we're talking about. Uh, don't be despondent. Keep coming back to uh, the light that is inside yourself and allowing the mandala, but don't, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by um, the voices in the head that, that, um, that keep us from things. A, a stuttering, shaky, um, weepy, I don't know what to do, but here I am, uh, is far better than silence of the wrong kind um yeah i love you take care of yourselves out there in there here and now <laughs> uh, bless you and uh, i'm glad uh, that in this uh, lifetime of mine i have in the ways that we do connect i've got to meet you Talk to you really soon and um, much love.